Hello everyone and may the 4th be with you. I'm Guy Klender and we are here at Sideshow's booth made exclusively for today. This is the light side of the force. We are going to dive into all types of stuff. We've got some world premieres for you. We've got some of the fan favorites and we're going to get to all of it. And there is so much. If you have questions throughout, Paul Hernandez is in the chats and he will be helping out as well. Follow the links down at the bottom of the screen. That way you're going to see some still photos, uh, some pre-orders and some more product information. So right now, let's turn on those tracking fobs and find the asset. This is one of my absolute favorites. Legacy FX, who created the original part, uh, puppet for Mandalorian, has got together with Sideshow and made this guy here. I absolutely love this guy. Um, the eyes are so bright and so, so alive. The hair is individually put in here, okay? It's hand-punched, and it has that soft, incredible feel. Now, it also has a point of articulation in the neck that will allow you to move and have it go to look at you wherever you are in the room, however you want to display it. Also, in the cowl is wire, and then that will allow you to kind of move it up and put it wherever you like. In his right hand here, we're going to get a little close up, his favorite toy, the Razor Crest Shift Knob. Now, that's magnetic, and it'll fit right in his hand like so, giving you yet another display option. Here's one I want to show you, and that is some of the cutest little green feet we have ever seen. The base is also something I want to bring attention to. This is in that classic Star Wars style, has a bit of a gunmetal uh, texture and paint to it, um, a bit like perhaps the Razor Crest or one of the other uh, ships that he's on. He does peg in on this base, but you can lift him off the base. So that gives you even more display options. What I, another thing I like is all of the weathering that they've done on the costume itself. It does have that bit of dirt, that bit of wear all the way through down to the zipper and all. It's absolutely spectacular. By far one of my favorites and a must have for any fan of the Mandalorian and a one one scale replica. That's a great one. Well, let's move on over to the man himself, the Mandalorian. This is from a little bit later on in the show when he actually has the Beskar pram. Okay, so he looks a little bit different, but he has most of that Beskar armor, except I still love that he had that, the right uh, leg has that blast, that uh, kind of gloop, that the metal, metal got singed in some manner and we're not exactly sure how, but I love that it's there. The Mudhorn Signet there. Now, what looks like it's mixed media, this is all sculpted and all painted. That leather, all sculpted, all painted. The cloth cape, all sculpted, all painted. And here on the side, we're gonna move the camera around that you see that it keys in here to give it that levitating look that it had. I think that's fantastic. He was the lone gunman, a gunslinger, uh, a bit of the Old West that was in there. And uh, kind of his walk here has definitely that with a hint of swagger. Um, up on his Ambin rifle that's slung over uh, his shoulder, you've got that incredible wood grain on it. Uh, you know, this is a weapon that we saw back in 1980 in an animated show. Uh, and for it to show up and become a main weaponry piece, in the show was pretty darn incredible. And I know that's one of the things that we've all loved about The Mandalorian is the fan service to those little things that we know. I absolutely love, love this piece. The base is on that cracked dirt and the planetary uh, uh, feel to it. It's about an inch, inch and a half thick. So it's a very, very sturdy base that allows for him to kind of have that pivot up on the one foot uh, walk there. Just an absolutely gorgeous piece. You've got, uh, even though this is his best car armor, you're going to see that there's a couple of nicks, a couple of dings. Uh, I don't think this guy has ever walked into a bar and not had a fight. Um, and that's the, kind of the fun part of the show is he's always getting into situations. And so that's been brought into here and it's one of my favorites. 
Uh, I cannot wait. This is also up for pre-order, so make sure you follow those short links. And as we said throughout the show, look at all of those short links for The Child as well as our premium format, Mandalorian. Next up, a man who needs no introduction, Anakin Skywalker. This is from the Mythos line. Now in 2013, Sideshow created Mythos. And this was one of my favorite things that we've ever done uh, at Sideshow.com is the Mythos. When I was a kid playing with the characters, playing with the toys, we not only reenacted our favorite scenes, but we created our own stories. And that's what Mythos is. These are the stories you don't know, the ones that we haven't heard, the ones that, that you create. And this is something that the artist was allowed to do. And so this is the Anakin uh, that comes with it. Uh, now these are all gonna be in the same scale as the original. So if you've been collecting Mythos all along, uh, you're in luck. So I wanna point out some things about this that I love. First up, his saber. I always liked the look of the Anakin saber. Uh, and in a full ignite of the blue, you see the scar on the head. We're gonna look at a close up here of the portrait. Now this has two separate portraits. We're gonna have this one here, which is a very stoic uh, look. We also have a rage and angered Sith look portrait, okay? And those are inclusive in the whole thing. So you will be getting both portraits. On his left shoulder there, you see the rebel insignia, or the, uh, the uh, Jedi insignia, uh, but you see the dings, the scratches, and the beating. Uh, even though Anakin chooses to really only wear shoulder pads, um, it definitely has a lot of wear. Down onto his belt, here's something that is a really neat detail. What you're gonna see here, and I'm gonna move it around, is where it would have clasped and uh, connected and held tight. You can see that they've even molded that up and over, okay? This, uh, like some of our others, is all molded, okay? It is all sculpted. So when you look at it and you think that, oh, that's fabric, uh, no, this is all, I mean, it's incredible artistry. It shows a lot that what the paint department can do and what the sculptor can do. Moving down, you do have that flowing lower cape, the leather, Anakin's boots were some of the coolest boots in the Star Wars galaxy. I. I totally love the shin guards that he, that he has on there, but he has managed to take down quite a few battle droids, both our uh, favorite Roger Roger, as well as um, the super battle droids. And here on the paint scheme, and this is done uh, through all of the saber cuts, where it still has that warm molten metal look that you see there. And I like that he has that last uh, robotic gasp uh, definitely the last Roger Roger we're going to see. I'm going to turn him around because I do want you to see those wonderful cuts that we talked about that are also on the, the super battle droid. You see the back and the flow of that. The cape has had a little bit of beating, perhaps a laser blast uh, hit there. All part of that mythos, all part of that story that you get to create with these. I absolutely love them. Now, Anakin followed around this guy here, General Obi-Wan Kenobi. First up, let's point out how beautiful is that beard. I mean, absolutely spectacular. Um, Obi-Wan has a great stare in this one, a looking up, uh, contemplative, uh, perhaps a, a, a little saddened uh, by where he finds himself. What I liked about Obi-Wan in this one is that Obi-Wan chose to war uh, a little bit more of the armament uh, from the clone trooper uh, boots and, and knee pads to all the way down onto the front uh, where Anakin chose to just wear a little of it. I think this also is why Obi-Wan followed a little more, was indeed a general. Now the cape on here is fabric, all right? So that's gonna allow you to pose it and bring it more to life as well. There is inner wire inside. That's gonna allow you to, to bring that billow into it however you like. He also is gonna have a second portrait. This one here is, as I said, that stoic gaze. He's also gonna have one where he's wearing the clone trooper helmet as well. So you're getting, again, more options. 
I'm going to turn him around so we can see a few of the other elements that I think are great. He stands atop a battle droid. He's cut apart. Again, those lightsaber marks that I think are so fun. But what I want to do and turn him around here is to show the flame effect. This is something that really has impressed me that Sideshow has been doing the last uh, few years on some of their pieces is that it has such a gradient in the, in the paint from the warmth into the almost billow of the smoke and that it is semi-translucent. Depending on how you have your lighting in your room, um, we'll change it and, 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 and create it. Obviously, we're using kind of dramatic uh, studio light and you're gonna have all different types of lighting. I know everybody lights differently. So again, make sure you're following those product links. You're gonna see more photographs um, of all of these, pre-orders, uh, and, and more information as well. Taking a look there, throw back to that famous Obi-Wan saber. And you see that burn and tattered look of the cape flowing into the under cape as well, also with that tatter, okay? This is deep into the battle, deep into many battles. Mythos allows you to continue with those stories and to create those, and these go wonderfully together. It's absolutely one of my favorites. Well, the next up is a favorite of mine and a favorite of almost everybody, and that one is Ahsoka Tano. <laughs> This is the premium format Ahsoka. And she is gorgeous. Now this is where she was in Rebels. All right, it's a little further on in Ahsoka's journey. Uh, and I wanna point out some things about this that really, really stand out. Obviously her two sabers. I really like that she kinda of had this backward uh, style of holding her sabers. Ahsoka was, was her, one of her, uh, the most original characters that they've ever done. I think it's why she's such a fan favorite. Um, you look down, you'll see the metal that they've done onto the boots. Now this, as I said, is from Rebels, and it depicts when she has her big battle with her former master, Darth Vader. Okay. You have the crumbled base rising, crushing, cracking, and exploding. Um, hopefully you've seen that episode. If not, they are on Disney Plus and you can watch them all now. I know I've been binging uh, on them trying to catch up uh, with Clone Wars and so I'm really liking it. And I did get up to this particular uh, episode which is absolutely uh, incredible. She has a very, very determined gaze in those deep blue eyes. It's one you want to, you, you, you continue to kind of fall into her. I also like her two-fingered force push. She could take two lightsabers, force push, do it all at the same time. Um, she was amazing on that. Now, what we don't have on display here is the exclusive piece. This is what we call a proximity piece, okay? And that is going to be her Morai, okay? Her convoy. Uh, that followed her. And that is gonna be on a similar base style, all right? Um, as I said, it's a proximity piece, so you kind of put it wherever you like inside. She can be watching, uh, she can be very close, again, giving you the display option. Um, I'm gonna turn her a little bit so you can see down here, uh, if you remember the scene in it, and it all kind of illuminates up, that even though this is done with paint and no actual light, it does have that illuminated look. Uh, the, having that slight curve into it really gives it some height uh, and a lot of different angles of motion going on in here. So I know this one is one everyone has wanted. Uh, it is now available for pre-order, so make sure that you follow those links down below. If you have any questions on it, again, we do have Paul watching in the chat, so it's going to help uh, particularly to guide you toward something like that. Now. We talked about Ahsoka's master and Ahsoka's learning. And that brings us to six scale, my love, the Clone Wars, Anakin and Obi-Wan. Yes, that's right. World premiere right here of these two from Sideshow. All right. Uh, all new bodies, all new sculpt, all new design. Um, 
reminiscent of what we saw in the show. And I'm going to be turning these around and talking a little bit more about them. What I think is amazing, let's first take a look at the Anakin. Look at the sculpt, that it has those animation lines. The style of Clone Wars and the way in which it was drawn was a lot different than anything we'd, we'd seen before. And that is definitely shown here, uh, particularly like in the nose. You see those angles and those cuts. That's, that's, that's what you saw on the screen. Also into the hair. I absolutely love what they've done there with that. All right. In this, they, had a, they were a taller, leaner drawn character in this. And as I said, an all new body and an all new style. We cut down to see those boots and how they taper giving you a lot of posability. All new body again, so we're gonna have a lot more articulation points in something like this. Gotta love his saber, as you see, these are those pointed style of saber that we saw again in the show, all right? I'm gonna spin it around so we can take a look at Obi-Wan, take a look at the paint and beading that we have on the right gauntlet. Okay, this is a little further on in the show where he doesn't have as much of the armor. But you see, again, probably the best beard in animation uh, right there. I love the angle. I love that. Uh, definitely a look I plan to go for. Uh, I just need to get the rest of the, the outfit, uh, apparently. Uh, but they are gorgeous. Take a look at the piercing eyes on it. Uh, with Obi-Wan, you get that intensity and the planning, that was the thing. Obi-Wan seemed to pretty much always have a plan or an idea of what he was gonna do. Where Anakin, always full on emotion, all right? And you see that in a bit of a scowl, a bit of a scurrowed brow, and the look up underneath the eyebrows here on the Anakin portrait. So it's absolutely gorgeous. And I can't wait to further on uh, get to show you more and more of these when we learn more about them, all right? So absolutely. Uh, two of my favorites, and I know something that so many fans have wanted is the animated series. And now, here we have the first two in there. I want to now take a look at things that also are fun for me, and that's housewares and a little bit of fashion. Where would we be without fashion? Here we go. Four of our Tiki mugs from Beeline Creative, also known as Geeky Tiki. Uh, they have been doing Star Wars and fan tikis for uh, a few years now. And they are so, so much fun. Um, all of the Geeky Tikis are dishwasher safe and they're also microwave safe. So if you want to have a warm beverage in them, you can. As you can see, I've chosen mine with a little bit of dry ice uh, just to make sure they're extra cold. This first up is going to be our Chewbacca. Uh, this is a different sculpt than if you have the first edition of him. It's a different kind of portrait, and again, with his famous bowcaster. It has the dark brown fur color on the outer glaze, but it has an inner glaze, which is going to be a yellow. He holds 21 ounces, so this is a big mug for big beverages. Now, a little guy, but still holds quite a bit, and holds all, our, all of our hearts, is the child, okay? Even though he's only four and a half inches tall, he holds a full 16 ounces. Now this particular one is with the eyes closed and his force push. It's one of my favorites. I like the ears on it because it almost acts a little bit like a handle, okay? A bit more mug-like, uh, so definitely one to have. Now, all of these right now are in stock and shipping to a galaxy near you right now. So follow those short links and make sure to get those in case you wanna have some wretched uh, scum and villainy friends, over. Here's one of my favorites and was definitely a must buy. I loved the return of the IGs uh, in Mandalorian, but this one here as a tiki mug also comes with the little top, okay? That is, woof, removable like so, all right? And both he and Mandalorian uh, hold about 18 ounces. Again, Machine washable, uh, dishwasher safe, microwave safe as well. And we're back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, see, there is so much to see. The batteries can't even keep up. We've got so much stuff.
Uh, next up is uh, one that has now appeared at my home uh, because she couldn't be without it, and that is the lounge fly of the child. Okay, this is child in pram. I'm going to give you a little 360 on that. Lounge fly has been doing so many fun uh, fan favorites in their uh, mini packs. Um, they do a very durable vegan faux leather on them. So I don't have to worry that these are going to get uh, beat up. Uh, wonderful little shading in that cute little smile that is stitched in all of the stitching nice and tight uh, and durable. It does have the look of the pram as you can see with the beaten, uh, the logo here. And here's one of my favorite bits. The front zipper pocket is done with a frog. We turn that to the side, again, that pram look. On the back, these are adjustable straps. When you open it, you're gonna see that inside, Loungefly does custom interior linings. I hope you can see that, that you've got little different uh, cartoon-like looks of the child. You have one of him eating the frog, frogs on their own, him in the pram, him kind of standing stoically. It's incredibly, incredibly cute, and you cannot be without it. Next up is our Ahsoka. And this is another great cosplay type bag to have, okay? This is both inner and outer pockets. Um, the traditional Ahsoka look, and even in the, the front, you can see that it's not just a crisp white, but it's done with a bit of kind of a glitter glitzen uh, to break that up and give it that realistic look. Multiple pockets on the inside, and again, the adjustable straps in the back. Follow those short links down below. These are both available, as I said, right now, okay? Now, many of you have probably been up all night for May the 4th, I know I have, and you've seen photos. Uh, you may have gotten little sneak peeks. You may have seen things. Well, I have those things right here in studio with me. It is the world premiere of some of the brand new Hot Toys. One that just came out a little bit ago uh, for pre-order, it was my instant pre-order. I'm not sure my fingers have ever moved quicker than they did with this deluxe two-pack, okay? When we got to see Boba again in Mandalorian, we all lost our minds. I think that's what's been so much fun about Mandalorian is that every episode we're either hoping for something that we're gonna see or we're just amazed because we never thought we were gonna see it. And to see Boba come back, we loved it. To see Boba come back in the armor, we couldn't believe it. Um, this is the deluxe one. It comes with two figures. Boba in that post Sarlacc armor, okay? The amount of beat and wear on this, there is barely any paint left on it from his signet to the gauntlets to the chest area to even the helmet, so beaten and so weathered. This is one of my absolute favorite looks that we've ever seen for Boba. Um, He's a more mature man now. He's still, as he said, making his way on his own in the galaxy. I like that we've now gotten away from the uh, gray snug jumpsuit, and he's a little more casual, a little more relaxed like some of us are currently, and a little bit baggier pant on that. We move down to those feet, uh, and it has a little bit of that uh, swamp boot that we've seen with a uh, what they call a spat over it, a loose-fitting spat, and that base does come with the figure. Okay, absolutely fa fantastic. Now I'm gonna have Sam pull over to the side here because I wanna talk about the backpack and why I love this. We know that Han spins around in Jedi and whaps that back jet pack, causing a big gash and the thing to go over. Well, as you can see here, it's been repaired. All right, and I love that they've done that. Now, also in 1980, we all hoped to get an action figure of a missile-firing backpack Boba Fett. It never happened for us, but now we get it, all right? This rocket will remove and you will have that you can put inside a firing look, all right? So we can finally, finally recreate that scene. In addition to that, the backpack also is gonna have the firing jets. So you can have him mid-flight, which is why we're gonna have the dynamic stand come with the figure, 
All right. The Deluxe has so many things. Not only does it have that, it's different rep weaponry. He has one of my favorites. He has whistling birds as well, but his are a kneecap one. When I saw that in the show, I lost it because finally we got to know what exactly the kneecap ones were for, and they were on here. Now we move over and we see our Nomad version of it. One of the most incredible sculpts I have ever seen. Here in person and when you get it in hand, the life-like quality of this is beyond, beyond anything you've ever seen. That scarring on his face, not only the multiple uh, large linear scars, but the scar tissue around it as well and the shading, his contemplative and stern eyes when we first see him emerge like this. Now the cape is going to have a wire in it that's going to allow you to, again to get lots and lots of different looks in there. This head can be put on to the armored boba as well, giving you even more. He's gonna have two gaffy sticks as well as his long rifle. So there is so much in the deluxe pack. He is available right now for pre-order on sideshow.com. Follow that short link. Do not get left behind on this one. It's a must have for Mandalorian fans, a must have for Boba Fett fans, a must have for fans of one six scale figures. I wanna move back here to another one that's been announced and that is the Death Watch Mandalorian. Now this one here is who we know that saves our young Mandalorian as a child uh, and saved a number of uh, foundlings at this point. We have that really unique blue color. I liked that on them. Um, and even though you take a look on the armament and you can see that it's been dinged and beaten, but they've gone back and painted their logo and their markings on it again, because that was very, very important to them to be uh, marked like that. This is gonna also have your dynamic flight base. Uh, the stitching that is on the costume is absolutely spectacular. This is more in line with those classic Mandalorian uh, outfits where they were a little bit more bodysuit snug. Uh, the boot goes all the way down with the leather. This is a fantastic one. It's definitely one I am going to be adding. Now, next up, this is world premiere, folks. You're seeing it right here. Yes, I did cry when I got to see this this morning. <laughs> it is the Swoop Bike and Mandalorian from season two of The Mandalorian. Okay, so much to talk about with this one here. We'll start at the very back with one of the most happy little faces. I mean, you rarely see anybody this happy on the back of a bike, but this guy here is loving it. His ears folded back um, as, as, as to have that kind of wind and motion. Now the back two packs are done out of fabric as well. All right, real nice tight stitching. Um, now this is the prototype. So exactly how all of that uh, goes together. I'm not quite sure, but believe me, we're going to show you all of that on Unsealed and Revealed uh, when we get it. The seat that he has is molded, but is one of the most incredible looks of fabric that I've seen in a long time. Now, Mando's armor uh, didn't change too much after he got the Beskar, except we notice right here in the right that he does get a full Beskar piece now. All right, now while we're there, I wanna show that his long gun lays on the bike. What was so interesting about this swoop bike is this is one that he would, you know, borrowed from somebody, hey, can I use your bike real quick? And it definitely does have that look of something thrown together with a lot of extra pieces they had around. This is not that sleek design that the Imperials had or anything like that, um, but that's one of the reasons I think it stands out. Take a look at the front um, nose cone and you see that it looks like little individual bolts that have been tightened with an Allen screw, little individual welds and screw holes uh, put together like that. And that continues all the way through the piece. Now this is going to come on a dynamic stand base, okay? And it is a brand new dynamic stand base. If you saw the unsealed and revealed that we did with the speeder bike and trooper, uh, I want you to know that this is different. It's gonna be a similar style in the way in which you're able to pose it. However, uh, the base is brand new and completely different. So it is absolutely amazing 
with his mud horn uh, signet up on there. I, I lost my mind on this scene when he finally had it. Uh, do not miss this one, folks. And again, follow those short links, like we said. Um, he is going to be coming to the site real soon. Make sure you pre-order. Don't be left behind on something like that. Now, we saw little Grogu back here, little ears back, and that fun smile. We've got more opportunities to see Grogu in 1-6 scale, and I'm going to have Sam take a look at the very front. All right, and this is a little Grogu accessory pack. All right, now again, how happy and fun is he in his pram? This is the pram that's made of Beskar that we see a little bit later. Uh, so if you have ordered your uh, Mando figure, this is a great one that'll pair in there. You'll do see next to it that it does have the cover, okay? So much like the other one, you'll be able to move the Grogu figure and put the cover on it. Next to that, when he doesn't have the pram, put him anywhere you can, whether that be in a satchel, in a backpack, whatever it takes. And this one here puts it in the little crate. Uh, look at the beat and the wear and the smacks and the scrapes on this. This is a crate that's held a lot of stuff and been moved around for a lot. There's barely any paint left on it. What surprised me, though, is take a look at the front where you've got these three little, the little squares, little divots. If you watch the show again, when he's in the pack with the troopers, there's three little ones. On his original pram, there's three little ones. I don't know if there's any meaning to that, but I like that it happens. We're gonna go down, and we have him in swaddling glue. I love it in the little blanket. We've got the little ear bent forward, the other tucked behind. This is, he's very sleepy, um, and he's just fantastic to have. Um, I don't think you can ever have enough of these particular figures, so you definitely want to have him like that. Next up, this comes with two creatures that we see in the Star Wars universe. Uh, the Soren Frog, which is a one-eyed frog, which apparently is absolutely delicious. As we know, he loves them. And next up is the Lorcat. Now this one here, uh, with the chicken legs and the large ears and this and the other, we saw this a little bit in Clone Wars and Rebels, and now brought into the live action of Mandalorian. Absolutely spectacular and so much fun. This is available for pre-order. Do not miss out on your Grogu. Um, follow those links below. And again, as we said, Paul is helping in the chats if you need any help. Back here. When she appeared in the show, again, there were screams heard around the world, and that is Bo-Katan, okay? I love any time that we get um, multiple portraits, multiple options of uh, how you can pose them. Also, I love when they give us a themed base, and this one does have one, okay? This here in the front can go on either in front or back of that base, all right? She does have the dynamic stand to allow her to have those flight modes. Uh, she's got her side arms, her double side arms in there. Um, that look, uh, that stoic look of her, that, that hope to find who she's looking for. Uh, hopefully you've all watched the show and know that she does uh, have somebody she's looking for and a particular item the, that she is looking for. Uh, but a great portrait of the actress who not only voiced it in the show, but then everybody was so crazy excited because here she was in real life in the flesh doing it in the show. Um, again, just like I talked about with the Death Watch, this is one that when they have like their pauldron and their emblems and their personal things on there, they're all scratched, they're all beaten, but everybody's got those signets on there, which is great. Also on here, you're seeing the tight stitching in her costume, okay? Uh, right around the arms and the heads, and it's absolutely fantastic, all right? You're gonna have so much uh, fun with this one. Uh, to, to add into your collection. Now, premiering today on Disney+, Plus, something we've all wanted to see more of. We can never get enough of the clones. Yep, that's right. World premiere, folks, here in the house, here on Sideshow.com, here for you on May the 4th, uh, is Echo and Hunter. All right. These guys premiered uh, in the episodes, and we absolutely loved them. We wanted to know more, and now we are getting to know more. Uh, if you've seen some photos of Echo uh, today that have been online, if you follow those short links and you're aware, he does have on that right arm, is gonna have a number of swap outs, all right? He does so many different things on that. It's also gonna have the portrait 
of Echo as well. And it's done more in a photo reel versus an animation style on that. Take a look at this. What I thought was kind of interesting was uh, their, their Group 99, um, instead of being the bright white, is kind of that grayed out. And now, I have a feeling these guys probably painted it themselves. They've never really said that on the show, but when you look at how there's the wear and the beat and the scratches, those are showing that white underneath being it being normally what we get is a dirt rub or something like that. But when you look at the chest here and see the wear on that, it's as though it was bright white underneath. And this armor on these guys was different than the other clone troopers because, of course, these guys were very, very different. Love, love his backpack. And I love the idea of all of the different arms. There on the chest, the skull that he has right on the front. Now, if we move up to Hunter, you see again the 99 on the shoulder pauldrons. Again, that wear and the rub that I talked about on this one here. I believe we will get also get a reveal uh, portrait here as well. Um, I can't wait. I I've, I've had, haven't had an opportunity yet to watch today's episode, uh, but I will be watching definitely uh, later on tonight to see exactly what these guys do. But you can see they have so much going on uh, with them. Take a look at the rub and wear on the helmet hunter, particularly toward the back area here. Now, Sam's going to spin around the camera and you're going to see the back of him. And then right in the front, you are going to see everybody's favorite, the OG Mando. If you missed out, if you sadly were hesitant on getting the original Mando or what I've referred to as the pilot episode Mando, you have another chance. Yes, you have another opportunity to get it, this time as a deluxe with the Blurg, okay? Mando is spectacular. This was my favorite armor that we got to see him in. Um, so again, as I said, this is your chance, okay? He's gonna be the original one that you saw. Um, all of the same uh, armaments and such will come with this one here. But let's take a look at the blur. All right, look at those eyes, that almost kind of fish eye. They are, they are a wet look, they are a determined look. Look at the mouth though, with the different size of the teeth. We have the large ones, the tiny ones, the wet gum look. All right. Again, this is a little bit of mixed media where we're going to have real metal rings that are going to be up on the saddle as well as on the bridle. The cloth wrapping around on that, the leather up top. Obviously, you can remove him uh, from there. Now, he does have movable arms, which are fun, and that neat base. All right. Now, if you already have Mando, but you love the blur, he is available on the site as well. And I know darn well that everybody's going to be clicking that short link below to get to the pages, to learn about the pre-order of this, see other photos as well. Now, he didn't really want to ride this thing. He didn't want anything to do with them. He did not like them. But there was one guy that did. And here he is, folks. World premiere, Quill. I know all of you watching right now can hear him. You can hear him speak. He has spoken. That is, I, I love this. this. This was another one that knocked my socks off. I cannot believe that we're finally getting an Ugnot. And one with so much personality and so much going on. Now, I, myself, I know I'm going to get Mando with a blur. I'm going to get an individual one. And I definitely want them riding together. And that is an option for me now. Um, take a look at the cowl that he has around there. If you watch the show, it's textured, okay? And that has been 3D printed on there to give it that texture that wraps around there. It does have that stoic look. When he says how long he's had to, to do the Imperial's bidding to win his uh, freedom, you see somebody who's, who's been through a lot, okay? And we move down to more of the front end of his costume. You see all of those different materials and fabrics those sculpted leather patches, uh, the little darts that he uses, his leather backpack. I love uh, the themed base that he is on. And I love the little goggles. I thought those were a lot of fun. I like how they're up on there. Um, 
you'll see uh, when you actually have him in hand that he does have the little whiffs of Ugnut hair uh, around behind him on the back, but he's absolutely spectacular. Uh, I cannot wait to click my order button for this guy right here. He's, he is one of my favorite characters that they were added in. Um, I loved seeing him anytime he would walk on, even if just for a moment. Uh, he has spoken and he is right here. There has been so much, absolutely so much that we have seen today that it can be overwhelming. I understand that. It's overwhelming for me and it's got to be overwhelming for all of you here as well. And that's why it's important to take a look at all of those short links. If you have questions, as I said, Paul is in the chat and is going to be helping out as well. There is going to be stuff on Sideshow.com all day long today. So make sure you're watching those. Make sure you're watching all of the social channels. Make sure you're watching all of your emails and your Twitters and everything else. There's going to be absolutely so much. It's so much to take in. It's, you, can feel, you can just feel it. You can absolutely feel it. And myself, however, it's, I feel a darkness though. Like, it's like a dark pull. But no, no, no. Today is about the light. Today is about the light. So you will have to tune in tomorrow, okay, at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, where we are going to celebrate Revenge of the Fifth. That's right. We are going to come back to our dark side of the booth. We again have world premieres. We are going to have premium formats. We are going to have six scale. We are going to have all kinds of things for you to see. So please make sure you tune in at 10 o'clock. But also on Thursday, we are going to have the fan tour. On May the 6th, you, the fan, get to tell me where to go in the booth. We're gonna have Terry and Paul are gonna be with me and thank goodness, I'm gonna need a lot of guidance, but I'm gonna need guidance from you, the fans watching. If you wanna see any of the products that we've shown here uh, on Thursday, tune in, ask your questions. We're gonna dive in deep. We're gonna tell you anything and everything uh, that we can about them. We're gonna help you with your pre-orders. We're gonna help you make those decisions. We are here for you, so that's on Thursday. We will see you tomorrow for Revenge of the Fifth. May the fourth be with you, and don't forget to let your geek side show.